Odin, the old father, may have been defeated, but he masterfully fooled all of his enemies by disguising himself as a silver lining they needed to unite Ragnarok. Tyr. Was Odin's plan so flawless, or were there subtle hints that could have unveiled his true nature while being behind the mask of the Norse God of War? I'm Angel for the B-Side, and in this new video for the Deep Dive series for God of War Ragnarok, we will analyze why Odin's plan worked almost to perfection, and some of the clues left out in the open that may have alerted Kratos and his crew of Tyr's real purpose, and probably avoid the fatal outcome for Brock. But before we continue, if you're a PlayStation fan, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can watch more content from many of your favorite PlayStation IPs like God of War, Horizon, The Last of Us, and other games in the future. But without further ado, let's take a closer look inside Odin's master plan. The real brilliance of Odin's plan in his search for endless knowledge was that he was constantly one step ahead of everyone. Always a cunning in mind, he perfectly assessed the playing field against the giants and recognized that the best way to get closer to them was right at the grasp of his hand. Tear. By imprisoning and confining his own son to the depths of a lonely cell in the realm of Asgard, he had enough time to study every single detail of it. The way he speaks, his gestures, and his diplomatic ways to interact and care for others. This way, he created the perfect disguise to fool the two strangers that started to pose a threat against him and then patiently waited for the correct opportunity to be discovered in the depths of the Apocalypse. When the time arrived and Atreus and Kratos encounter T for the first time, Odin sets his plan in motion, beating an Oscar-worthy performance by saying this. What trickery is this, Odin? What game do you play with me now? You can see a faint doubt on his face if his plan was actually working as Kratos grabs him by the rope that is binding him and unsheaths his blade. But after the rope has been cut, the bowl is in his court. Odin quickly realizes that he needs to gain the confidence of both, starting with the weakest link, the naive Atreus, and decides to play along as he joins them to escape the mines. Every single detail has been carefully planned. His fear for Kratos, the sudden compassion for Mimir's fate, and the broad daylight that hurts his eyes as he exits the mine. By the time Atreus speaks the words, We need you. Odin has passed the test and gained the trust of the boy. And later down the road, when they visit the realm of Alfheim, after saving both of them while they were nearly drowning by the light, he gains Kratos. With his plan in motion, Odin recognizes that the best way to stop the imminent war heading to Asgard and get one step closer to unveiling the secret knowledge he desires is to divide and conquer. And this is when we see him change his attitude after what happened in Alfheim and starts addressing Atreus as champion. A male fit for a champion. Enough. He knows Kratos' reluctance for the prophecy despite Atreus' hope for it to be true and how this is the weakest point in the unbreakable chain of father and son. The plan works, and Atreus storms off alone. Odin brings him to Asgard and then starts to get closer to him by using the name Loki. Is that you, Loki? You a little trickster? Uh, I'm just messing around. Of course he means to betray me. This validates the idea of the young lad being the champion, not only by the constant drilling of his name or the extravagant gifts, but also reinforced by the unmatched trust that Odin has in him leading to important missions to help him get the answers he desperately seeks. Odin not only has divided both father and son, but has gained the upper hand as a trusty and supportive friend to Atreus. By this point, Odin has control of both sides of the battlefield, advancing on his quest for knowledge in Asgard and keeping the enemy close while tagging along with Kratos and his allies. But things didn't go according to plan. And after losing the mask thanks to Thor's recklessness, he needed to risk it all, take Mars back into his own hands, and that is when the tragedy struck the Holder Brothers home. Odin almost slips when he sees the mask. You have it! But he needed to be patient. He proposes one stealthy way to gain knowledge even when he has lost the precious item. With the mask within his reach and Loki now completely disposable, 
He finally sleeps by telling he knows the way inside Asgard. I will lead us to Asgard. And the most unlikely and witty character of our heroes catches him red-handed. Brock. Then, we all know what happens. But let's pause for a moment. Was the old father's acting really that flawless? Actually, no. The only person that could have made this seemingly perfect plan fail was Odin himself. His pride and witty mockery we see throughout this story are his biggest weaknesses. And there are several key moments in God of War Ragnarok where his plan could have failed due to this. Let's take a look at them. The biggest hint about Tyr's real identity comes obviously from his animosity about the idea of going to war by unleashing Ragnarok. Anything that is slightly connected to violence. Here. Your statue in the lake. You had a spear. I thought you needed a weapon. Walking stick? No. The idea of Kim being fit to be the one that can guide the armies of the Eight Realms against Asgard. It's the truth. And not just because of prophecies, no one has ever united the realms as you once did. That is not who I am anymore. Him put in an actual fight against any enemy. Is it over? No thanks to you. Or the mention of Ragnarok is quickly discarded multiple times. But if Atreus is in Asgard, there's no getting him back without an army. We should be raising one. Yes, nothing like a catastrophic war to improve the situation. The only person that could have probably spotted this earlier and make a difference in discovering Odin's facade on time and perhaps saving Brock was Freyr, Freya's brother. With his witty younger brother personality, he reached the point of discontent with Tyr and pointed out the antagonizing nature of Tyr every time any plan against Asgard was taking shape. You'd incinerate every soul in Asgard and call it self-defense? Does he ever suggest plans or just crap on everyone else's? If he had pressured him a little bit more, perhaps some strands could have been revealed that would lead to the uncovering of Odin. The second hint behind Tyr's true nature comes in the shape of curiosity he is always very attentive to any piece of information regarding the giants. But you skipped over how he fought and freed the Valkyries, and that the giants are all gone, and how they called me Loki, and finding the shrines the Giants are gone. When we got to Jotunheim, they were all dead. Dead? Do you think Odin? We do not know. The giants always did enjoy hiding their secrets in plain sight. Wait until you see this. Any small clue that can give him a millimetric advantage is being listened to with great attention and then used against his own enemies. And the best example of this is the discovery of the name Loki. Tyr, in your travels, did you ever hear the giants talk about Loki? I'm sorry, that name doesn't sound familiar. Loki! You made it! Loki! <laughs> the rift got brighter! Loki, we did it! We are on the verge of great things, all of our work, together. Third on the list is Odin's mockery. We learn through the story about Freya's rocky past with Odin and the sacrifice she made to save her realm, but a funny detail happens when T re-encounters Freya at the Hola brother's house. Instead of calling her by her name, he uses the one he used to call her when they were married, Frigg. I never thought I'd have the pleasure of seeing you again, Frigg. Uh don't call me that. I haven't been that person in a long time. We can see the discomfort on Freya's face and she even asks not to be called by that name again. Also, Odin repeats that swift aggression by poking fun at Atreus when he's discussing with Kratos his relationship with Odin. But I swear it's for a good reason. There is no good reason to go to Odin. He'll only cloud your mind. One final mention for this point where I need to give a stunning innovation to Odin is for keeping his composure in the advantageous position he had when the group is planning their next steps, after killing Heimdall. I would have laughed the whole time, but he never flinched. Not even once. Heimdall's dead. I can't believe it. There's no stopping it now. Odin swore peace only so long as you spilled no more Aesir blood. I refuse that deal. Yet he honored it. But now... 
But what? You and I know better than anyone that Odin's promises never last. We have the advantage now. It's time to bring him down. No. None of you understand what's coming. Odin's vengeance will be his only concern. You are whole. Do not ask me to put you at risk again. He's at risk where he stands, Kratos. Dividing Odin's focus would buy us time. And give us a pair of eyes in the enemy's inner sanctum. The fourth and final detail is Groa. Tyr mentions he had visited Groa many times before, which may not rise any eyebrows. But when they witness a prophecy of the destruction of Asgard inside one of the boards and discover Groa lied to Odin and Asgard is going to be destroyed, a baffled old father shows for an instant true surprise for what he has just learned. It must have taken Odin a lot of composure to avoid slipping out of his fake persona after learning this fact. She lied. Groa lied. Of course she did. <laughs> Odin's working off a false prophecy. <laughs> Even when his plan didn't come to fruition and he lost the mask at the very last second, Odin showed how he could manipulate almost everyone to his heart's content, delaying his fate for just a moment until Ragnarok finally arrived at the doorstep of his very own realm. Thank you very much for watching this video. I know Odin is more cunning than we can imagine, and I probably miss other more subtle clues. So be sure to share them in the comment section down below if you have any of them. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the channel, or if you really love my work, consider supporting via Patreon for free day early access to any video that I publish here in the channel and some other cool perks. But for now, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later on the Visa.